Hey everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. My name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how to paint this Deathwing Terminator from the new Dark Vengeance starter set. I began with the model assembled and primed with Army Painter Skeleton Bone. If you don't have Army Painter Skeleton Bone, I recommend priming the model white and then base coating the model with Ushabti bone. Since the primer basically covered the base coat, the next step is to provide some shading to all the armor areas. Therefore, I gave it all an Agrax Earthshade. For this shading, I diluted the Agrax Earthshade greatly by basically using two parts water to one part Agrax Earthshade. That way, this wash or shade will get in all the recesses and provide some nice detail in all the armor areas while not being too dark as to actually tint the overall appearance of the model since the base color is already very close to what we want to accomplish for the final color of the armor. The key to this step is to focus on the areas that actually have recesses so you can basically ignore completely flat surfaces if you want and second, make sure that you cover the entire area that you want to give the shading to in one single step. You do not want to cover this in two steps since if you allow the first one to dry, it will actually show some of the lines of where the first shading ended and the second one began. Plus, if after one shading you want to add a little bit more darkness into the recesses, feel free to do another shading. However, let the first one completely dry before proceeding to the next one. In contrast, if you want your recess to be much brighter, like a very bright brown or very bright brownish orange, like in some of the pictures, instead of using Agrax Earthshade, use Seraphim Sepia Shade. I just prefer the dark brown as opposed to the brighter color in the recesses. When the shade was dry, I gave all of the armor areas a dry brush of Ushabti Bone. What I love about dry brushing is that it allows you to create some very nice blending for the armor colors, and plus it covers only the raised areas, so it keeps the recesses, the very nice shaded Agrax Earth shade and allows you to basically just cover the raised areas and create some nice tonal variation in the armor color. When dry brushing the armor, make sure to blend the armor very well and create a nice even coat of the raised surfaces. That way everything looks really nice and uniform before proceeding to the next step. As you can see, after the simple wash and this dry brush, we're already approaching basically the standard color of the Deathwing Terminators. And finally, just to add one more little bit of tonal variation, I gave the top part of the model, so basically I dry brushed at a 45 degree angle approximately, and just focused on the top part of the model, what areas would be exposed to the sun. And I did this with a one-to-one -one mix of Ushabti bone and white scars to produce a very, very light bone color. As you can see, the second dry brush, I used even less paint on my brush and focused on the edges, so that way it produced really nice tonal variation on the face and the top shoulder pads and the back. Next, I wanted to focus on the black areas of the model. However, I do not really use black unless it's a base color, since black is a bit of a boring color and it's basically dimensionless. To fix this problem, I use a product called Grayliner from Reaper, which is a very, very dark 
matte gray. I focused on the areas such as the wiring on his arm, the wing on his chest, and the gaps in his armor with this gray liner. Basically, when the light hits this gray liner correctly, it'll actually produce some really nice color contrast as opposed to black, which is just flat. I then focused on all the reds and these particular Deathwing have a lot of red on them. So I started them off with the base color Mephiston Red, which tends to go very nicely over this bone color. For this step, I focused on the gun, his symbols on his shoulder pads, his purity seals, and his chainsword. As with the previous steps, make sure to have a nice, even coverage of this red before proceeding to the next step. As this red is very dark and contrasts greatly with the bone, it is very easy to pick up such things as brush marks or inconsistencies in the color, so just make sure that they have nice, even coverage before proceeding. Also, though obviously you never want to make mistakes, be particularly careful with this step as the red is much, much darker than the bone color, and therefore if you accidentally go outside of the area, it is a little bit more difficult to clean up than normal steps. I also use the Mephiston red on a scabbard of a sword, or the container of a sword basically, and the rope on his chest and over his sword. Once again, after the base color, it's time to provide some shading. So I gave all these red areas a Karaberg Crimson shade. This shade will get into the recesses of all these areas, bring out the amazing detail, and it'll actually almost create a, a very, very dark red to almost the color of black in certain recesses. Plus, you can use the shading on the sword, for example, to create a very nice gradient from dark to light. Using maybe a feathering technique. And with this step nearing completion, we can now turn our attention to highlighting the reds and painting the greens and metallics.